the uh, Y factor method. And what we need for that is a calibrated noise source and a spectrum analyzer. And of course, some sort of amplifier to test. And uh, we're going to use our ZKL2 Plus for many circuits again as a device under test here. And basically, what we need to do is to measure the output of the amplifier with the noise source turned on and then again with the noise source turned off. Determine the difference and plug all the numbers and the excess noise ratio of the noise source into a formula. And this is what it looks like mathematically. So um, pretty straightforward. We just need to determine our ENR. Again, stands for excess noise ratio in dB. Uh, that's the uh, noise level coming out of our noise source above Johnson, Nyquist or thermal noise. And then the Y factor itself is just the difference of the power output with the noise source turned on and the noise source turned off. So very straightforward. I have the, uh, we got a little bit of power coming down here, going into the noise source. Then the uh, noise comes out of the noise source, goes straight into the ZKL2 plus amplifier, which is gonna be on our device on the test. And then that output is going into the MDO 4000, which we're using as a spectrum analyzer. That's really it. That's the entire test setup. You don't need anything more than that. Uh, calculator is definitely handy. So um, let's take it from here. The first thing we're measuring right now, and let me actually zoom in on the screen, is the output power level with the noise source turned off. Uh, let's frame that a little bit better. There we go. So we're going to try to determine the noise figure at 10 megahertz. And we see that the output level out of the amplifier the amplifier is powered up, the noise source is not. So uh, we get negative 97 point, let's call that seven. I know the last digit kinda uh, jumps up and down there, but let's call this 97.7 dBm. So that's the first number we need. And let's turn on the noise source. And you see, no you don't. Now you see that the output power is increasing. Of course, that's what we expect. We're putting more noise into the amplifier, so we're expecting a whole lot more signal coming out of the amplifier. And I'm averaging this trace here, this white trace is averaged over 512 um, sweeps or acquisitions. So this is gonna take a moment to settle. And in the meantime, let's talk about why would we use the Y method over the gain method that I've shown previously in a different video. Well, number one, the gain method is simply the poorest and simplest form that you can do. And you need to be absolutely certain about your gain to use this method. And any uncertainty in your gain creates a huge uncertainty in your noise figure, obviously. So the gain method is preferred when you have a high noise figure or a high gain type situation. If you have a small noise figure, an extremely small noise figure, you probably do not want to use the gain method. Now, the downside of using the Y method, of course, or the Y factor method, of course, is you need a calibrated noise source. You need to know your excess noise ratio coming out of the noise source, else you can't do any math. So um, that's basically the difference. If you don't have a noise source, you may have to resort to the gain method kind of as a good guesstimate. But if you do have a noise source, you probably want to prefer the Y factor method over the gain method any time of the day. So it looks like our trace has settled here. What do we have now? Negative, meh. It's jumping again on this last digit. Let's call this negative 85.9. Uh, 85.9, plugging this in the calculator here. So let me zoom out again and uh, show you what I'm doing with the calculator. I put in the two values, 97.7, that's what we measured beforehand, negative 97.7 dBm. Now we're measuring negative 85.9 dBm. I omitted the, si omitted the signs, but the difference is still 11.8 dB. That is correct, even though I switched signs here. And that's the, uh, the Y factor, and we're actually gonna store that 11.8 in a variable that we are gonna call Y, once I find it here on the keyboard, there it is, store 11.8 in Y. Then the next factor, again, let's look at this formula again real quick. We have determined Y, that's, that's the difference between the uh, output power with the noise source turned on and noise source turned off. We have determined that we have stored Y in the calculator already. 
Now we need ENR, that's the excess noise ratio of the noise source. And we simply get that from the data sheet, or in this case, this is actually indicated on my noise source. We are looking at the uh, noise factor at 10 megahertz. I haven't mentioned that yet, but the marker on the oscilloscope, uh, the spectrum analyzer showed that clearly. So at 10 megahertz, we are uh, showing a excess noise ratio of 15.5 dB above thermal noise. And uh, that's also called Johnson Nyquist noise. And there's a temperature given for that, but we're gonna ignore that for now. Um, it's room temperature, so that's good enough. We don't wanna be that picky. So we know 15.5 is gonna be our ENR. So same here, 15.5. I'm going to store that in a variable. Uh, we're going to pick E. Let's call it E like this. Store. Bam. Done. Now, I need to copy this formula into the calculator. So give me one second to type here. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. All right. 10 log. 10 to the power of E as our variable divided by 10 divided by 10 to the power of y divided by 10 minus one. There we go. All right, got it all typed into the calculator. And like I said, I'm using variables. Of course, you can just type the numbers in directly, but I just did that for clarification for better overview. And if we hit enter, we're getting a noise figure of 3.996. Uh, let's round that somewhere. Let's round it to four dB. So uh, this varies a little bit, actually quite a bit from the noise figure that we determined with the gain method, but this is a whole lot more accurate. And assuming that the uh, ENR value provided by the manufacturer of this noise source is accurate, um, this method is more accurate than the gain method. So in this configuration, with this test set up, we have determined the noise figure for this amplifier at 10 megahertz at the current room temperature to be 4 dB. So and that's all there is to it. This is how you determine the noise figure using the Y factor method. Again, you need a noise source, you need to know the ENR, you determine the difference of the output power with the noise source turned on, noise source turned off, and then you plug the entire thing into the equation, let your calculator do the math, and that's it. That's all the magic there is to it. All right, I hope you like this video and I'll try to make more of these uh, super short, super basic type videos uh, that provide interesting knowledge in a, in a minimal amount of time. So that way you don't have to watch hour long videos to, uh, to learn things and you just learn small things at a time. So I hope you liked it. If you like these kind of form, this kind of format, this kind of video format, let me know. I really want to do more of them. If you have topic suggestions, let me know. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, and anyone else who might be interested. And of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel. See you next time.